Kyle, thank you so much, dude. This yeah, is of course. Awesome. Um, it's special for me because not only um, do I know you as a colleague, but um, you're also a good friend. And so to start it off, I know that you are from Miami originally. Yeah. And um, and then you went to the University of Miami. So maybe tell us a little bit about how you got started. Maybe what you know got you interested into filmmaking, but then also um, when you were in film school, what kind of you know how did you work that to your advantage to get to where you are? Yeah, I uh, I grew up in Miami, but I I was born in Miami, but I grew up all around, and then I moved back there for film school. And I wasn't I don't have those stories that like every filmmaker has about um, about like shooting movies in their backyards. Like I did a little bit of that, but not not certainly not a special amount of it. I was more the guy that would like go to Blockbuster and like stack up all the VHS cassettes and like walk home and tried to watch every single movie in the store. That was like my thing was was I just watched a lot of movies and I just loved I loved movies and I think it was that. But I mean, I do think that there's like a big difference between loving movies and actually making them and actually wanting to make them. Uh, I think a lot of people f find out the truth of that in film school. You know, I think a lot of people, uh, I mean, to a degree, I mean, I say this, I say this with humility, like, it's like, oh, I love movies, so maybe I should go to film school. It's like an exciting idea. And then you get there and you're like, oh wait, like actually making movies is this weird, fractured, complicated process that it, it can be fun and great and I love every second of it, but for some people, the, 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 the connective tissue isn't there between loving movies and actually wanting to make them. And just like a lot of people, I think sometimes when your hobby becomes your profession, you start to resent it. I'm glad I haven't, but I think that film school, I think what's good, I, I say this broadly even just about college is, I think there's a lot of, there's sort of a lot of reasons to go to college and there's a lot of reasons to not go to college. And I would sort of advocate all of them across the board because I think each person's different. Like I'll, I'd say this much jumping ahead a bit, like, had I moved to LA when I was 18 and tried to start doing what I did when I moved here when I was 21 after college, I would have I would have fallen on my face. Sure. You know, there's something there's something about moving away from home, going to school, being more independent, really focusing on the things you're interested in, taking a few years, three or four years to figure that out, mm -hmm. that is incredibly incredibly helpful. Uh, that probably had the most value in me for film school than the actual literal like, oh, I learned this, this, and this, and then when I went on my first set. I learned this, this, and this. So I don't. I think everyone's different. I went to more of a liberal arts kind of school. I mean, it was you know sort of a broader education. I also majored in English along with film production. So I tried to treat it as like that time between 18 and 21, as opposed to like, oh, what am I going to learn that's going that I'm going to bring with me? I mean, in that regards, if you're looking for more that the specificity, the more hands-on, like. I encourage people to look at the trade schools, like the full sales and those kind of things that say, they're gonna say, hey, these are the these are the five cameras on the market and this is how to use them and this is what you're gonna do when you're on set in this position because by the time I got to production stuff, and I did plenty of production stuff in school, it was so much more piecemeal. It definitely, it didn't, short of, time management, which is about like 80% of production, sadly. I didn't, you know, it wasn't uh, the actual roles or the way they worked or the equipment we used. I mean, I was shooting on film. I'll never, I'll probably never shoot on film. You know, we spent a lot of time theorizing about filmmakers and it's good that we do. We look at like, how did that person build that scene? Why is the scene that, that good? But we never talk about the other side, which is like, well, maybe it was raining and someone passed out and so they lost three days of shooting and they had to just like, and I think that the, the theorists don't want to acknowledge the challenges of production. Um, but I actually think they're important to determine, not to, to ruin the like facade of the, the sort of, 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 the, of the auteur theory or, or whatever it is that you know, people are learning. But there's also something to take into account, which is that filmmaking has many more moving pieces to it than like other artwork, right? Music is a much more controlled thing. If painting, writing especially, these are all very controlled things. They don't require a crew or people or equipment. I mean, you can argue that they do, but like you can sit with a guitar and play a song. You can't just sit and have a movie up here. And uh, now you can a little bit more so, but there's still, there's all these moving pieces. And the point to say that is, is that a lot of filmmaking is, is engineered luck, is guiding a crew or gu getting through a day in a certain way or shooting a certain amount of pages and trying your best to bring the vision into the restrictions of just getting the pages shot too. I mean, there's more indie filmmaking than anything, but I, I wish that those, I wish the practicalities of filmmaking were taken into account a little bit more. There's a scene in uh, North by Northwest when Eva Marie Saint shoots the gun and you know, you can see a little boy who was an extra in the background plugging his ears. I remember we spent time in a class once talking about 
why, why would Hitchcock put that boy in there plugging his ears? And he was like, no, they were probably on take five. They were on take five and his ears hurt and he knew the gunshot was coming. So he plugged his ears in. And it's just there in the film and yeah. they were shooting on, they were cutting in film. They were cutting this so one second, two second, you know, yeah. they weren't. And, and you know, so there's a danger in overanalyzing film. And I think that that's something, and I think that happens with all any art school. You know, there's a danger in intellectualizing your work too much. Then, especially with film, you get on the set and it's like, oh wait, there's like a hundred people here and they're all waiting for me to talk to them right. and tell them what the shot is. Right. You know, like that's what, the, and there's an actor who doesn't want to do that shot or doesn't want to say the line that way. I mean, there's yeah. so many other things. And I wish that I felt I had 80% all that other stuff and maybe 20% the practicality. And I feel like it should be more 50-50, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I don't know. I think I made the most of it by doing a lot of my own, um, making friends there. I still collaborate with some of the people I met there in school. Doing some of my own things even outside of the school system I think is really important. Um, making shorts and keeping your ambition in check I think is really important. Like a lot of people at film school I think were determined to try to make like the best short they could that they could like get an agent from. I mean, Jason, it works for Jason Reitman, it works yeah. for some people, but like I think it's actually the best time is to like make mistakes, make something really stupid. Like, I hope no one would ever really see my college shorts. They're not anything I would like wear on my sleeve, you know? Um, because they're nothing like what I make now. Because I think I went and did those things and sort of weeded out the things I wasn't interested in or the things I did like and what I was gonna do. I, yeah, I think, I just feel like it's a time to make mistakes, but there's some people who go into college so career focused and oriented. If you have the motivation to make a feature film, Oh, by the time you're 18, you don't need to go to college for that then. You know what I mean? Like, there were so many people making features through the college process, and I was just sort of like, wait, why, 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 do, you know, just just make a couple of, like, kind of crappy short. I mean, we were shooting mini-DV then, you know? Yeah. Um, thank God that's gone. Um, and it's, uh, so yeah, I don't know, I have a conflicting opinions on it. Like, I don't, I think I needed film school, but I also respect and understand the person who's like, wait, why am I going here? And I think, I think you need to ask yourself, I think people need to, especially now with student loans and everything that's going on, I think it's really important to ask yourself, why am I going to school? Why am I paying money for school? I think the, the ideology, and this is bigger picture and I'm ranting a bit now, but the ideology that used to be like, you grow up and then you go to college and you make your parents proud, I feel like that's kind of going away a bit. I think there's something good about that though. I think it says that then if you're going to college, you're going to college because you really have a reason you want to be there and you want you want to know why you're, or film school specifically, you want to know why you're there. Obviously, if you're starting to be a lawyer or a doctor, you have to. You don't have to for film. Um, in fact, some would encourage you shouldn't. I, I wouldn't say that. I just think each person's different.